Hello everyone and welcome back to English with Lucy. Today I'm doing one of your requests. Somebody asked me how to respond to how are you? And they don't just want to say I'm fine or I'm good. Some more advanced, interesting and creative ways to answer how are you? Now I've mentioned before that this question, how are you, does not always mean what you think it means. It's not always necessary to reply to how are you with how you are. In this lesson, I'm going to tell you all about how to answer this very common and important question. And I'm going to help you sound more advanced and more like a native speaker. Before we get started, I would just like to thank the sponsor of today's lesson. It is italki. If you haven't heard of italki before, it's a huge online database of both native and non-native teachers who give one-to-one -one video lessons 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can learn English and over 130 other languages from anywhere in the world as long as you have a stable internet connection. It's an incredibly affordable way of learning a language, much cheaper than an offline tutor or a language academy. So many people message me and ask me how they can meet and chat with native speakers. italki is a really great option because not only do they have their qualified teachers, they also have community teachers who will practice conversation with you. They've given me an offer to pass on to you. You can get $10 worth of italki credits in your student wallet 48 hours after making your first purchase of any amount. All you've got to do is click on the link in the description box and sign up. Right, let's get started with the lesson. Firstly, I want to discuss some common mistakes that non-native speakers often make and some native speakers as well. And there's also a perceived mistake. Natives will tell you that you're wrong, but you're actually right. And we'll go through that. Many people will tell you that it's incorrect to respond to how are you with I'm good. They say it's wrong. It's not wrong. To any natives who are listening and thinking, oh my word, my mother told me it was wrong my whole life. Your mother was wrong, I'm sorry. Even my own parents told me that it was wrong to say I'm good. I should say I'm well. However, in this case, good can be used. I think my parents probably told me not to say it because it sounded too American. And as a child, I had this terrible habit of picking up phrases that I'd seen on American TV shows and using them in a tiny little British accent and they hated it. Saying I'm good is grammatically correct if you are not directly referring to your health. So if you're just saying in general, I am good, it's fine. Just as if you'd say in general, I am bad. I'm well is also fine and it normally means that you're referring to your health or saying good or satisfactory. However, this is where people get confused. If you say I'm doing well, that's fine. But be careful when responding with I'm doing good because if you say I am doing good, it means you are doing good things like visiting homeless shelters and donating toys to children's hospitals. Good things. You aren't talking about how you are. Now let's take a look at some easy ways to say I'm good or I'm fine. I'm good, I'm fine, I'm well are pretty overused. They're very, very boring. So if you want to impress an examiner or impress a native speaker or just your friends and family, take a look at these. We can add pretty. So we'd say, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty well. You could say pretty fine. Maybe not as much in the UK, but maybe more in America. Pretty in this case means fairly. I'm fairly good. I'm fairly well. You can also say quite. I'm quite good. I'm quite well. But that sounds much more formal. I'm quite well, thank you. Very formal to me. If you want to emphasize how good you are, you can say really, I'm really good, really well. Now those are still pretty basic. So what about some more interesting ways to respond to how are you? Well, one I really like is I've never been better. Shortened to never been better. This means that you are feeling 
truly great. You could also say, so far so good. This is also commonly used if you're doing a task. You're talking about the progress. Until now, it's been going well. Your life has been going well. Another one, one that I'm seeing a lot nowadays, is can't complain. And this can be said in more than one way. It depends on the tone of voice. If I say can't complain, it means my life's amazing, but I don't want to brag about it. So I'm just going to say can't complain. <laughs> if I said can't complain, I guess, can't complain, it means could be worse. <laughs> the more common use is the sort of self-deprecating, not wanting to show off kind of use. And another one is better than I deserve. I like this one, it's quite funny. This is quite a tongue in cheek one. Okay, I'm gonna give you a couple of silly ones as well if you want to make people laugh or cringe. If someone asks, if you're a dog lover and someone asks you how you are, you could say, if I had a tail, I would wag it. <laughs> and you can also have a couple of flirty ones. If someone says, how are you? You could reply with, word on the street is that I'm pretty good. <laughs> or, I'm great, but I'm totally biased. <laughs> I love those ones. I am, um, I'm standing on my own in my studio, laughing alone at how much I like those ones. <laughs> now, what do you say if you're neither good nor bad? If you are okay? I'm okay is really, really boring though. Let's look at some other more exciting ones like, oh, I'm all right. <laughs> now, I wanted to mention I'm all right because it's a unique one in the sense that it can be both a question and an answer. I might say to someone, all right, and they'll say, all right. <laughs> so it's like, how are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. It's very, very frequently used. Um, just be careful on the pronunciation. We don't always pronounce the L. We don't say all right. We say all right, all right. Another one is so-so, so-so. I could, could be better. The next one, not too bad, is again one that depends on tone of voice. If I say not too bad, it means good. But in this case, not too bad, it means I can I mean, I'm not great. Another one, could be better, could be better, but I could also be worse. That's something you can add on to the end. If everything's just really boring and average, you can say, same old, same old, really. Another couple, which mean you're just this close to being bad is, I'm alive, or I'm surviving. <laughs> and the last, good enough good enough. There used to be a teacher at my school called Mr. Good Enough and I thought what a, I don't want to insult his name, but just who named him in the past? He's not great but he's good enough. Let's call him Mr. Good Enough. A couple of funny ones, especially sarcastic ones, they're quite useful. You could say I'm all right now but there's still time for everything to go horribly wrong. <laughs> or a flirty one, better now that I'm talking to you. That's quite a charming one. Now, what should you say if you are bad? If you feel terrible, just you're not having a good day for whatever reason. Well, quite a good way to start off a complaint or a negative phrase is to start with, I'm not going to lie. That is a nice way to prepare someone for the negativity that is about to escape your mouth. I'm not gonna lie, I feel terrible. You could also say, I'm not doing so well or I'm struggling a bit. These two imply that you're struggling maybe a little bit mentally or emotionally as well. So it's important to watch out for somebody who says these to you because they might need a bit of support. The same with I'm snowed under. To be snowed under means you've just got too much work. You're completely under pressure. Or it's been a tough day, week or year. It's been a bit of a tough week. Another one, I'm not having an easy time at the moment. Watch out for people who say those phrases because sometimes they're reaching out a little bit and, and might need support. Now, what happens if you feel bad but you don't necessarily want to talk about it? Well, I have some phrases you can use to avoid the question. 
If someone asks, how are you? You could say, you don't want to know. <laughs> or don't ask, honestly, just don't ask me. Another one, do I have to answer that? <laughs> Maybe if they know that you're not having a good time and they've asked, how are you anyway, which is a bit annoying, you could say, do I really have to answer that? I think you already know. <laughs> or what happens if somebody asks, how are you really early in the morning? You could say, shh, it's too early to tell. And if you are feeling ill, a nice idiom we can use is, I'm a bit under the weather. I'm feeling a bit under the weather. I'm not feeling very well. And finally, a couple of funny ones. You could say, overworked and underpaid. I remember there was a teacher who would always say that when I asked him how he was. How are you? Overworked and underpaid, but I'm doing okay, thank you. You could also say, slowly but surely dying, actually. Aren't we all? If you want to be really sarcastic, you could say, somewhere between blech and meh. Or if you just need a hug, you could say, just hug me and leave it at that. Right, that's it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learnt something. Don't forget to check out italki. You can get your $10 worth of italki credits for free in your student wallet 48 hours after making your first purchase of any amount. And don't forget to connect with me on all of my social media. I've got my Facebook, my Instagram, my Twitter and my personal channel, Lucy Bella Earl. I will see you soon for another lesson. Mwah.